Hey everybody, welcome back to the Calibrate Tool Spotlight Edition, where we showcase individuals and businesses in the community doing great things. And today we're going to meet Taylor Lindsay of the Plant Plug LA. And you're going to feel like you earned a PhD in botany, plants, agriculture, garden tools, organic farming, and all of that. So stick around and I'll see you guys right after this. <music> Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Lindsay, AKA The Plug, AKA The Plant Plug. I sell plant and plant accessories. I help people learn how to grow their own food, create sustainable living practices for low cost and no cost. As you can see, I have a ton of beautiful plants here that I grow myself, sow from seed, and also we create our own soils, we create our own fertilizers, as well as tell people how to continue to grow their own food with little to no money and also specialize in small spaces, balconies, backyards, back alleys if you have them, I love that good alley. So I've been doing this professionally for two years and three months now. I started back in 2019, uh, back in June 2019, actually that's two, a little more than two years and three months. And I've been uh, growing and killing plants since 2009, but I started taking plants seriously and also the study of plants aka botany I started taking that really seriously back in 2016 so I would love to show you my garden I'd love to show you my favorite tools and I'd love to show you everything that we do and right now we're centralized in South Central hoping to expand but this is my home and I love it and I love to bring everybody plant education all right come on everybody come on to the farm welcome to the mini farm the plant plug mini farm let me close it down if somebody told me it's not a farm unless you have chickens. So fortunately, my mom wanted to get chickens, uh, hence her retirement. So this is what we do. This is the sunflower patch. This is a pollinator patch. It's actually very important to have pollinators in your space to welcome bees, birds, butterflies. And also, I just did a little bit of minion. As you can see, the stalks are still in there. I keep them in there because sunflower stalks, they may die quickly, but they're great for breaking up really tough soils. So those are actually sunflower stalks. Those are mammoth sunflowers and Mexican torch slap flowers. Uh, great native plants to the space. Super easy to grow, especially if you have really tough soil quality. A lot of these houses in the hood tend to have horrible, horrible soil, clay, dust, dirt. I learned there's a difference between all of that. So while we're trying to rebuild the soil and also amend it, we add some plants, leave some stalks there, helps break up the ground soil. And as you can see, I just started amending this side and I do my growing in parts. So that way, one, I could take my time. And two, I could see how things acclimate. So we're doing a little bit of amendment and also biodiversity. What is biodiversity, you ask? It's where you add different plants to the same parts in order to add different nutrients and bring different elements to help build your soil organically. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about amendment. And when I say amendment, I don't mean apologizing to people and writing your wrongs. I mean that we're gonna turn over this soil at the season's end. Some people do it once a year. I was that person. And now I do it every single season to prepare for the new crops and the new plants I wanna grow to bring more diversity. We talked about biodiversity earlier to my garden bed. So this bed is actually just recently turned over. And what I'm doing is I added some chicken manure. We do make our own chicken manure here. Don't worry, it doesn't stink. And then what we literally do is turn it over. And there's certain things that you can add to actually help better your soil. The goal is to add as much organic material as possible. That includes your own compost from rotten fruit and vegetables, my favorite broken eggshells, and also you can add some manures. I prefer chicken manure because it's potency and also how inexpensive it is. It's about three dollars a bag if you want to buy it. And then we just flip everything over and add new components to our soil. So I'm going to actually fill this bed all the way up. I did buy some soil um, today. I'm going to fill this bed all the way up and then let it sit and acclimate. Acclimate it's a fancy word for adjust. And then in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna actually fill this bed with beets and radishes. I love the beet. <laughs> so that's what amendment is in short, short, sweet, and simple. So that's what we're doing today. This is usually the easiest way I can throw down some soils. And then I'll show you how I do it. This is my tip. Every bag of soil actually has holes in it for aeration. This is actually to prevent mold, uh, moisture entering the bag unnecessarily. So what I usually do is rather than need a huge pair of scissors, I literally just take and rip the hole and then go across the sides and dump it. 
So this is the Miracle Grow vegetable soil. It was on sale. So we're just gonna add that on top of the chicken manure and just get it started. I'm not a big, 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 big 100% organic person all the time. It's actually, there's this whole greenwashing movie that drives me crazy. But what I do like to do is build my own beds because of erosion. So every year and every season, you kind of do have to refill your beds, whether it be like 25% because it literally breaks down back into the earth, which I really appreciate it, which gives us a chance to add more compost, which I'll show y'all later, which is just rotten food. <laughs> This is another one. So why I'm using this potting mix, let me tell you why. So whenever you are using a raised bed, as you can see, it's confined, right? It's not directly the earth. I hope she doesn't come in here. So back to the bed. So what happens is whenever we're using a confined space, whether it be a pot, a bed, if we put direct soil in it, just straight dirt, dirt gets hard as a rock. So what I do is not only do I add different soils and compost and fertilizers, I also add a potty mix because it contains perlite. So perlite, if you ever bought an office plant or were gifted a plant, you'll notice that you'll have small white rocks in there. When I was younger, I used to think it was styrofoam. It turns out they're actually rocks that absorb excess water that keeps your soil loose as well as it prevents overwatering. So we're gonna add it to the bed because I've made the mistake of adding the wrong type of soil. Cause remember we talked about the difference between soil, dust, dirt, clay, and everything was hard as a rock and I couldn't grow a thing. Well, I can grow kale, I was a queen of kale. But yeah, that's what we're adding today. So I'm gonna commit, I'm going to mix this all up with my favorite tool and I'm gonna fill all this bed to the top just so we can get a good mixture of everything all through and through. And then when I add the plants, that's when I'll add the compost. And also to answer any questions about fertilizing and composting, I do it every two to three weeks atop the plants because we want to add more organic matter because fertilizers tend to just sit on top, especially liquid fertilizers, tend to sit on top of beds where compost, since it contains earthworms and other elements, it creates more of like an ecosystem in the bed, which is that's what we want. Remember, organic matter matters. So this is actually my favorite, 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 favorite tool ever. It's a hula hoe, or as some people know, it's a hoe. So uh, this one is actually, it's a beveled hoe, meaning that it has an opening. Uh, the one of the most popular hoes that is used is actually like the flat metal, uh, just sharp hoe, which is also great for cultivating spaces. But what I like about the bevel is that you can move it in and out in a fluid space, especially if you're trying to loosen up soil underneath where a traditional hoe or the flat edged hoe is just you come down in one motion and, and pull back. So this one actually I can go in a 3D motion as far as amending my soil. So I'll show you how I use it. So here's the bed that I just had the soils to. And then see the bevel goes right through. It is not really digging, but it's more so of just three dimensions of mixing and breaking up, but I can go as deep as I want depending on how much pressure I apply. So, go back and forth where a usual flat edge hula ho, you just go back and scrape. This one, I can go deep and deep and deep, just making sure I'm incorporating all that new soil I just added. Ooh, that smell. It smells like dirt. It smells like money because we're not going to have to buy food because we're growing our own stuff. So, this is my actually my favorite, favorite tool. I don't know why, I just had an affinity for a beveled hula hoe or a hoe. So, I just found that they have miniature ones at Grocery Outlet. I'm super excited about that. Oh, here she comes. You can close that fence, thank you. But yeah, it's great for removing weeds. It helps with edging, landscaping. I think that's why I like it so much. You can also cut down any unnecessary it was like decorating the cake gotta smooth it out and get that perlite nice and deep okay there you go <laughs> that's how I use my favorite tool this is my number one my beveled hula ho Get you one. Get you, you can usually get a miniature one 
for smaller beds or if you have larger projects. A nice, what is this, about five feet, four feet? Oh, hell yeah. This is my second favorite tool. This is actually gonna date me. It's gonna, y'all let, y'all will really know how old I am after this one. Uh, this was originally on an infomercial uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, if you remember. It's called the Claw. It was supposed to fulfill and solve all your gardening needs. It's actually hilarious. I'm trying to find a clip of it. And it's a hand rotiller. So I, my parents actually have a gas rotiller. I don't like using gas tools. By the way, if you have a leaf blower, you're on my hit list. I, I can't, I can't with the leaf blower. Get a rake, please. And also this is a very easy tool to operate. It's actually a great forearm workout as well as it's for anybody that's just trying to, whether it's make a hole or amend their soil. It's another great, amendment tool that just makes things really easily easily done so it breaks up everything what i like about it is that it's not just four prong it's two prongs so it breaks up top and deeper soil bottom soil at the same time because that's what we're trying to do especially for adding organic matter this is great for adding compost to your beds before adding any type of plants and you pretty much whether you're left-handed or right-handed or ambidextrous you could just break it up and see how easily it works. This is not so much great for digging holes, but it is great for rotating your soil. So this was gifted to me by a family member for the low, low price of free 99. But I remember when it came out, I think it was either 19.99 plus 9.99 shipping or 29.99. I don't remember, but I was so excited to get this. It used to have the, I've had this for so long. It used to have the claw sticker on here with the logo. So I was really excited to get this and I can just easily break up any tough soil or add any new organic material while hand rotilling. So just a slight flick of the wrist and you can have a really good broken up bed or soil mixture that's incorporated from top to bottom. So yeah, the cloth. I don't even know if they sell these anymore. <laughs> All right, so it's funny, I feel like, you ever watch Green Acres? That's what this reminds me of. Uh, this is a, my favorite tool as well. I, I don't know about y'all, but I love a good shovel and I love a good bucket, but we're not gonna talk about buckets today. So this is a spade. It is the spade type shovel. It is great for digging circular holes. I prefer to use these ones with plastic handles because I found that over time, wooden handles tend to wear away as well as you can get splinters in your hands. I've been stabbed a couple times. So I prefer plastic handles with a nice good grip and American made if you can get it, which you can, you want to pay money for a good shovel you don't want things chipping and breaking off but this is great for digging holes but in this case since we're doing something a little smaller we're not really amending a bed we're actually adding a bitter melon plant i got a mini shovel i like mini tools they're pocket size this is great for uh you know jobs smaller jobs and even when i go remote and i visit other people's gardens and i just need to add a plant real quick because everybody knows the, like the i guess the three basics if you don't we'll talk about it the three basic tools that come in a garden tool set right and it's usually that small spade and they break and they chip but with this small american made spade shovel it's like the best of both worlds it's both a small hand tool but also it has the sturdiness and the ergonomics where you could put your foot while making a hole for your plant so we're gonna plant some bitter melon this is actually used a lot in asian cuisine great to grow in fall full of iron and it tastes exactly what it sounds like a bitter melon but if you want to get your iron on i highly suggest growing it so what we're going to do is we see how we already have this bed here where stuff is already growing with this larger spade we're going to disturb that we can tear up their roots we can tear up anything else that may be growing but see i want to add this plant so what i'm going to do is oh this soil is actually better than i thought and just dig a little hole and this way I can go a lot deeper than with a hand spade. I'd already be knuckle deep in dirt, right? So I just say, if you just got a manicure too, you don't want to get mud in your cuticles. So I can actually go pretty deep with this hand tool. This was actually about $9, which I really, 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 really liked. And then I can go deep enough to where, see all those roots? Huh. Who knows what that belongs to, but I can go deep enough to actually plant this bitter melon. So I'm just gonna make a little Star Trek formation. Oh my God, you guys are totally gonna know how old I am with what I'm referring to. And then <laughs> drop it in there and cover it up and it's good to go. See the mini tool made it, oops, I'm making a mess. The mini tool made it that much easier with how small and also affordable. And also if I really need to get deep in there, like I was digging a hole for like a small tree, I could put my feet on the lips of the shovel. That's my favorite. A spade is a spade, right? Does this have a name? Uh, this one, I think that one is Hen Dog. 
her other sisters, um, they passed. They were much, much older. They only live to be like five, six years old. Mm -hmm. So she's the last of the Reds. And then uh, these other two are Rosie and Stardust. They kind of run the show. But I love how they glisten green in this light. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, so this is one of my favorite hand tools, and I don't see it used a lot in Guardian videos, so I'm glad we're doing it now. This is a mallet. It's a rubber mallet, and it is a powerful piece with a single strike. Unlike a sledgehammer, it is matted with rubber, and I got Stanley. I love Stanley tools as well as tools that are made in America. And this one was about maybe $15, $16. Like I said, you don't want to get inexpensive tools. You want to get quality, the most bang for your buck. And speaking of bang, this is what I use it for. So I love bamboo when it comes to building barriers, also erecting plants that need more support. Say you have a small tree, a young tree, a, a small seedling, a sapling in the case, a lot of times they're gonna need a little assistance when it comes to staying vertical, right? Keep it vertical. And so what I do is I love using repurposing natural materials. And also when it comes to building certain things like chicken wire and chicken fencing and pest fencing should be the most expensive in my opinion when it comes to building your own fences. I love bamboo because it's literally about a dollar, a dollar a peg, but you do have to buy 25 to 50 at a time. But this is perfect in this case, especially if we're trying to protect our small garden projects. So we built this, um, it could actually use a little bit of updating, but we built this about a year ago. It has been rained on, but what I did was rather than use a hammer, which can totally split it down the middle, we used the mallet and with a few strikes, you can actually see it still moving now goes right in without compromising the material. So with a couple of zip ties, a nice wall of fencing, whether you wanna use plastic um, or mesh in this case, I love to use a mallet to knock in my project a little bit deeper into it. And then we're gonna completely repair this as I'm adding new soil to grow sunflowers. It's not too late to grow your sunflowers in fall. So that way we could have more bees come through. Let the bees know I got food for them. So I love a good mallet. Great for installing fences and smaller projects while protecting the materials you're using from chips, especially with metal to metal or metal to material that tends to tear things up. So I've installed many fences with this and more fences to come because I love a good mallet. So highly suggest. All right, so this is my last favorite tool, which is that I'm not saving the best for last in this case, but actually this is really, really important that people have a good set of pruning shears. I use this only for plants and mostly for harvesting. Uh, plants need to be cut back very often it's like giving a haircut maybe every two to three weeks depending on the plant that you have uh, especially peppers because what it does is it influences plants to grow more food if you just leave a plant dormant like this it'll get the signal that you you don't care and it'll be like fine you don't need me i'm dead or i'll stop producing as much fruits and vegetables so the thing about shears is that they can come really inexpensively yeah you can use a very regular pair of Scissors if you want, but the reason why I don't suggest that is because they don't have an edge to the blade and they can't necessarily be sharpened. And also they they tend to be cheaply made in the sense that the center, the center screws or the bolts holding them together is not a bolt at all. It's just two little clack clack pieces that fall apart. And also if they get wet, they rust and they're no good. And you don't want a dull pair of anything, whether it be a knife, a, a blade on a table saw, because it's very, very dangerous. So safety first, right? Even when gardening, things happen. So with these pair, I actually, they haven't been sharpened yet, but they're very easy to cut with. What I like about that is that it has an ergonomically safe handle where rather than me having to go like this all the time, I can literally do more of a squeezing motion and you want to invest in a good pair of shears. So this one costs about maybe $25, $30. I've had these for about five years now. It's patent pending. And also I use it just to do a simple snip and it's easy for me to harvest anything. Another thing though is that you, when I say I use these just for harvesting, it's because you don't want to, oops, almost cut that off. You don't want to spread disease from plant to plant. Meaning that if your plant's not doing well, you actually want to use a whole different set of shears. If not, wipe them off with alcohol when you're transferring from plant to plant. So say I have this black cobra plant, right? It's part of the cayenne family. And I was to jump to this eggplant. This eggplant is about two years old and it needs to go. It's not giving good eggplants anymore and actually green eggplants are poisonous. So rather than me being like, well, let me cut this off since I'm here, I can either use a whole different set of shears 
or I would wipe these off with alcohol so that way I don't jump from plant to plant to plant because these bell peppers are still good, the habaneros are still fine, the cayennes and the black cobras are still fine. I think the peach tree grew through here. We got to fix that later. But we want to be able to protect our plants at all costs. So I'm just going to snip a lot. I hope you like hot sauce because I don't know what else to do with these. But yeah, you definitely want a good pair of shears. You can, I guess, if... If you wanted something just for getting your fruits and vegetables and not so much plant jobs like pruning, you can do the KitchenAid kitchen shears. Those are about 15 bucks or the OXO ones, but solely use them for that because you don't want to do any cross contamination or anything like that. And you want to keep those specifically for plants. So this is my last uh, tool on the tool list, but definitely invest in a good pair of shears. You want them to last. You don't want them to fall apart. These have been rained on. These have been snowed on as far as I'm concerned, but they're still good and they're still just as sharp as the first day I got them. So, and the, please put on the safety. Safety first, y'all. Okay, so this is where all the magic happens, as they say. Uh, this is actually shared space with my father. And also my parents have graciously let me turn their whole backyard into what you see today, and including the front yard. There's plants everywhere when you come to the mini farm. And what I wanted to accomplish is something that I dreamed of doing for a long time, which seemed, seemed impossible. It actually used to be illegal, and it still is in some states. Just making food more accessible. And I'm not talking about so much farmer's markets, because those seem to be very expensive and out of our reach when it comes to being in places like South Central, Compton, uh, watts what have you it's more so of reconnecting people to their food and their food sources and why not bring that to their front yards their backyards their alleys their driveways as you see if you ever came here there's like 50 plants in the driveway i'm probably underestimating that and also leading with plant education i too like i said commenced to kill hundreds if not dozens of plants when I first started because usually a lot of people are left hanging when it comes to the plant buying process and that keeps a lot of fear and apprehension in our communities right so it only took the food industry about 40 years to completely disconnect us from where our food came from when I strongly believe as a person of color black indigenous woman that it's in our blood I noticed that farming skipped our parents whereas my grandma who is very country is from the farm. How how many of us have grandparents that are from the farm, you know? So that's what they did. And it's an enjoyable thing and I hope to bring that to as many people as possible, whether we're visiting community gardens, we're creating our own co-ops or we're literally growing in our apartments, our balconies or have a friend that has a space that we can all have shared. And also it should be inexpensive. There's a lot of arbitrary markup within these industries when it comes to plants and there's no reason for that. Whether it be foraging or seed collection, we're surrounded by it, but it's so interesting that unless you're tapped in or you're plugged in, in this case that's where I come in you don't know you absolutely don't know so um from the fig tree that runs in Costco in Inglewood that's actually a traveling fig near their tire center where you could pick fresh figs to the rosemary gardens that surround a lot of our churches you wouldn't know unless somebody told you which is totally fine that's why I'm here so overall that's the bigger picture it's a way to bring our own currency in the form of food to our neighborhoods it's a way to dismantle systems of oppression whether it be environmental racism and also create food sovereignty within our communities and it all starts with one plant that's where I started with as well as having that attraction and connectivity to the food I literally crave kale not because I wanted some super trendy juice cleanse detox it's because I came to love kale because I grew it. That's all I can grow my first year. So I have that connection. Curly kale is my favorite, by the way. It's still in the backyard. I've been holding out. That plant is three years old, by the way, in the backyard. But it's just that connectivity for food. And that's what I hope to plant literally sow that seed into everybody more so the people that are curious about it and apprehensive so you can do it and it all starts with one plant and one question. And that's what my overall goal is, is just to make so many green spaces real not driving priuses in south central and neighboring communities um and also i can show you what i have going on here this is where i'm sorting my seeds right now uh we're doing a fall collection um shout out to anybody that has given me seeds uh, botanical interest i buy from independent farms back to roots organic i do everything myself and then i want to show you all this piece that means a lot to me my family's actually from louisiana i'm creole if you haven't noticed thank you and um my grandfather used to build houses and he also built this chair this chair's uh, been around for three generations it has a little bit of a hole in it but it's a big it's an heirloom to the family and he carved it out of wood himself he also made toys um rubber band guns remember those 
and uh, built different things. And luckily this made its way over here all the way from Louisiana and we were able to take care of it for this long. So uh, this tree, oh tree, sorry. This chair predates me by 30, 60 years, but I'm very, very excited to have it and be able to keep it in the family. And it's a reminder of what is and what can be and what was in a sense that we can literally create our own legacies just by having what would be deemed small um, and these things can make a big impact over time. So I'm hoping to keep this around and we can create our own Smithsonian. We don't need to wait on anybody else. But yeah, this is where everything happens. All the little ideas and all the plants and all the plant work go down in the plant trap right here in South Central with the plant plug. So thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited that you got to come through and see the farm firsthand. It's not as aesthetically pleasing as it usually is when everything's in full bloom, but this is what it looks like. We do dirt, we get dirty around here. And I'm just excited to share this with you. Uh, thank you, Caliber 8 Tools for coming through and sharing your time with me. I'm excited to be on your channel as well as make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and click any links in the description box. So that way we can learn more about tools and really learn about the things that we can access on our own and also have fun with our own projects and bring this know-how into our home. So I'm really grateful for you coming through and sharing your time with me. Thank you. Guys, you got to support Taylor at The Plant Plug LA. I mean, she's like a diamond in the rough. You just saw the video. How much did you guys learn from that? I mean, it was so much information that it's overwhelming. You could have wrote a book on that video right there. All her links are in the description below. Subscribe, follow, support what she's doing. And while you're doing that, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button as well and share this with everybody you know. Thanks, guys. See you later. Arrow, it has a great taste as well as um, it's hot. And then you can't stop eating it. I've never had habanero hot sauce before like that. Like Tabasco is these, this is Tabasco. Tabasco uses cayenne, right? But he just, I don't know what he puts in it. He runs a taco truck, but I was like, can I get some? He's like $20 a jar. I'm like, okay, Tabasco is high, but that's because it's aged, it's barrel aged. You gotta pay for that aging, but. Yeah, let's see if we have. And it turns out garden jalapenos are hotter than regular jalapenos. Did you know that? Say that again. Oh, garden jalapenos are hotter than regular jalapenos. And right. they're not coated in wax. See how shiny that is? That's because it's fresh and you have about five days to maintain that shininess where in grocery stores, they're coated in wax and touched by 20 different people before you eat it. Mm. So, let's see. Oh, I look at the baby. So you don't want your peppers and stuff to sit too long because I think that's all we got right now. Yep. And then I'm just drying these out so I can collect the seeds and start over again. These are Japanese eggplant. So this is going to come out though. These are all going to come out. This is probably going to stay a pepper bed. I have some chocolate uh, chocolate habaneros coming up. Some Trinidad scorpions. I am super excited to bring the people peppers. I can't eat all this. I probably shouldn't. I'll have an ulcer in no time. But yeah, really excited about that.